Today on our 2010 Chrysler Town & Country, we'll be installing the Tow Ready T1 wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number 118552. To begin with, we will need to go ahead and raise the rear hatch of the vehicle, as this is how you access the two screws that hold in each of the tail light assemblies for both the driver and passenger side. To remove the tail light assembly, you'll need a T30 Torx head bit. We'll go ahead and remove the two screws and then you'll need to kind of work the light assembly around a little bit as there are two more tabs up towards the front of the vehicle that need to be pulled out of their housing as well. With the tail light assembly removed, we can go ahead and disconnect the wiring harness. To do this, you'll need to release the red locking tabs on each of the two connectors and squeeze the tab and gently pull the plug off of the connector. Now we're only going to be tying into the top connector, but to make things a little easier, we're going to go ahead and remove the bottom plug as well, just so we can go ahead and set our light assembly aside. We'll go ahead and repeat the same process for both the driver and the passenger side. Now we'll go ahead and take our T1 wiring harness and we'll need to make our connections with the yellow and brown wire in on the driver's side wiring harness. When you push them together you want to make sure that you hear them click and then push the locking tab down to secure it. Now we'll go ahead and take the green wire with the two other connectors and we'll fish it down between the body and the bumper, pulling it out the bottom. We'll do the same thing with the four flat. Now we're also going to go ahead and connect to the power wire off the converter box with the long piece of wire that's supplied with the kit. To do this, we'll use a yellow butt connector and some electrical tape. Once we have this connection made, we'll go ahead and again fish this wire down between the bumper and the body of the vehicle. Now we're ready to go ahead and pick out our location where we'll be mounting the white wire with the ring terminal for the ground, as well as sticking the actual converter box. Before we stick the converter box to the body though, we're going to go ahead and use a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol to clean the area off to make sure that the adhesive sticks with the area cleaned, we'll go ahead and peel the back side of the two-sided tape off and stick the box to the body of the vehicle. You want to make sure that you mount it low enough that the tail light assembly will still go back into place. Now with this done, we'll go ahead and use our self-tapping screw to mount our ground wire. Now that we've got all this done, now we can go ahead and put our tail light assembly back into place. To do this, we'll connect the other end of our T connection of the yellow and brown wire to the back of the tail light assembly and then reconnect the other plug to the back of the tail light assembly as well, making sure that they're fully locked into place and the red locking tabs are pushed down. We can then put the light assembly back into place and put the two Torx head screws back in as well. Now we'll need to go ahead and route our wires. Our green wire with the two plugs will need to route over to the passenger side. A good route for this is to put it behind the brackets that hold the rear bumper fascia in place. We'll also use a few zip ties here to help secure the wire. We'll also go ahead and need to run the four flat over to the center of the hitch, again using a few zip ties to help secure to the hitch the excess slack in the wire. Now that we've got our green wire routed over to the passenger side, we're going to go ahead and use a section of old airline tubing to help route the wire up into the area where the factory wiring harness is and the light assembly goes. With the wires pulled up, we're going to use a zip tie to help secure it to the factory harness to help keep it from falling back down. It'll also help keep any slack from getting in the way of where the muffler is because you do have to run kind of close to where the tailpipe is. Now we're ready to make our connection on the T connection with the green wire. We'll do this with the factory harness on the passenger side and then connect it to the back of the light assembly. Again, we'll go ahead and connect the other plug, making sure that both lock into place and the red locking tabs are pushed down. With that completed, we can go ahead and put this tail light assembly back in place as well, using the Torx head screws. Now we'll go back underneath the vehicle, and we'll need to go ahead and route our power wire, which is that long black wire that we use the butt connector to connect to the power wire off the box, to the front of the vehicle. When routing this, we want to make sure we stay away from any sharp edges, areas that may become hot, or any moving parts. 
we're gonna go ahead and use some zip ties to help secure it along the way. Now when we get up to the engine compartment area, again we'll use a section of old airline tubing to help fish the wire up towards where the battery is located. The battery on this vehicle is located on the driver's side front. Now with the power wire routed up near the battery, we can go ahead and take the inline fuse holder and we need to snip it in half. One side of it will get a ring terminal connection made and the other side will get a butt connection put on it. The butt connection will connect to our black wire that we just routed from the rear of the vehicle. With these two connections made, we'll go ahead and use a little electrical tape to help protect them as well. Now we're ready to go ahead and connect our ring terminal to the positive side of the battery. It's a 10 millimeter nut that you'll need to remove to slip the ring terminal over it. With the ring terminal in place, we can go ahead and put our 15 amp fuse into the fuse holder. Once the fuse is in place, we'll go ahead and use a zip tie or two to help secure any loose wiring. Now we'll go ahead and test our four flat at the rear of the vehicle using our test light. It's a good idea to have someone else run through the light functions while you're doing the test. We'll go ahead and put our ground on our test light on the exposed prong of the four flat. With the running lights on, you should get a constant beep off the brown wire. For the left turn, it'll be the yellow wire, which will give you an intermittent beep or a light. And for the right turn, it'll be the green wire. For the brakes, it'll be a constant beep or light for both the yellow and the green wire. As you can see here, everything's working okay on our four flat. And with that, that concludes our installation of the Tow Ready T1 vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number 118552 on our 2010 Chrysler Town & Country.